Okay, hi everybody. Today we're going to look at the differences between DNA versus RNA. So first of all, we usually find DNA in the nucleus. Um, but we do also find it inside the mitochondria and also the chloroplast. So these are organelles inside cells. In terms of RNA, uh, it's always found in the cytoplasm. So DNA is double-stranded. It's got two nucleotide strands, which consist of its phosphate group, the five carbon sugar, in this case the deoxyribose, and four nitrogen-containing bases, which we'll go over later. RNA, on the other hand, is single-stranded, but it also still has the phosphate group and the five carbon sugar, in this case it's the ribose, and four nitrogen-containing bases. So DNA has deoxyribose, which means that the sugar that is on there is actually missing an oxygen, which actually means DNA is more stable. RNA, on the other hand, has oxygen on the sugar, so we just call it a ribose instead of deoxyribose, and this makes RNA more reactive. And so because DNA is double-stranded, there's actually base pairing involved. So adenine and thymine will pair together with two hydrogen bonds, and cytosine and guanine pair together with three hydrogen bonds. RNA, on the other hand, uh, does not have any base pairing and just has adenine, uracil, cytosine, and guanine in its strands. Uh, note that it is uracil and not thymine. And also because of the base pairing in DNA, uh, the number of purines have to be equal to the number of pyrimidines. This is also known as Chargaff's rule. So your number of A's and G's have to equal your number of C's and T's. In terms of RNA, there is no proportionality like there is in DNA uh, because RNA is single-stranded. So we just observe different amounts of these bases and there is no relationship between one base to another. There are also several types of RNA, the first being tRNA, which serves as the carrier of amino acids and is extremely important in the translation process. mRNA stands for messenger RNA, and it's made from transcription of the DNA. It's the first step in creating a protein. rRNA is the ribosomal RNA. It's the RNA component of the ribosome, and it's essential for protein synthesis in all living organisms. It actually constitutes the predominant material within the ribosome. Finally, as we discussed earlier, RNA single-strandedness and the fact that it contains an oxygen in its ribose sugar makes it much more reactive and easily attacked by other proteins. Okay, if you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, comment below any topics you want us to cover in the future, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye!